I discovered Hamid Yergali, a national writer and poet, during my regular strolls along the Visnovka River embankment. Biknur Kisikov, writer, author of numerous novels, stories and poems, member of jury of literature contests, inspirer and organizer of Kityapfest festival. At first, I got interested in his personality, and then when I discovered his writings, I became fascinated by the colorful rhymes and deep lyrics of his poems. And having become an admirer of the master's poetry, I translated a number of his works into Russian. But, of course, it was an amateur translation that did not fully convey the variety of colors of the author's poetry. His poems were once well translated by the talented poet Vladimir Savelyev. My translations were not that great, alas. Neither did my translations, unfortunately, reflect the depths of Yergali's protagonist souls. However, he was not just a mere creator of literary characters, as he himself was a hero of the most terrifying war of the 20th century. Our country sacrificed many sons and daughters, sending them to the war front. They were people of different professions, among them were prominent writers and poets who, together with other other people were defending their motherland. Among them were writers and poets Bao Jan Mamushuli, Kamul Khan Isabayev, Abdi Jamil Nurpisov, Tair Jarokov, Sirbai Maulenov, Kalejan Bekhojan, and many others. They were soldiers of literature, and Hamid Yergali was one of them. Frontline poetry is a phenomenon intrinsic to all post-Soviet Union countries that have gone through the Second World War. It is only natural, as any major historical event impacts the culture of the country. In Ukraine, Maxim Rilsky and Nikolai Bajan wrote about the war. In Tatarstan, there was Musa Jalil. In Russia, Konstantin Simonov, Alexander Twardovsky, Yulia Drunina. In Kazakhstan, frontline literature was also widely represented. However, although being familiar with the names of those frontline authors, we sometimes struggle to remember what exactly they have written. Today, we will remind you of some of their works. Baozhan Mamushuli, the hero of the Soviet Union, pens several books. Moscow Behind Us, which describes the formation of a military character and the heroism of Soviet people. The Psychology of War, a collection of authors' lectures and speeches, and General Panfilov, a biography of the legendary commander. The theme of war in one way or another saturates almost every single work of Kazakh writer Abdi Jamil Nurpisov. His topic is especially prominent in his most famous work, Blood and Sweat. Also in both Kurulandia and The Long-Awaited Day, written in 1950, he recollected and vividly described his own military experience. Kalmukhan Isabayev, Kazakh writer, journalist, and war veteran, wrote over two dozen different novels and stories. For example, his Kharbala is a story of a teenager who was orphaned during the war. Then there was The Last 24 Hours, an unusual story about an employee of the Soviet commandant's office in Germany who decides to tell his fellow countrymen about how the German people rose from the ruins of fascism. If you look at Hamid Yergali's life in combat, you will realize that he lived the life of a hero. Being a brave cavalry squadron commander, he marched throughout the entire Europe, leading his soldiers into battle after battle. And then he got badly injured in Slovakia. He was saved by his regimental comrade, Peter Mardak, a soldier from Ukraine. Peter died saving Hamid's life. Struck by his death, the poet wrote a ballad named I Dreamt of Petya, dedicated to his brave friend. I am old, and I am tired of the burden, those seventy long years. For you, however, there is no more time and no more death. But I subside today to this regime and their truth, 
It was just me who saw it all. When life of yours was broken off, I was there bleeding, almost dead. The world was spinning above my head. Under the rain of bullets, you crawled to me and said, hold on, and soldiers were waving to us from the line of front. Yes, I still remember how you pulled and pushed, hiding me in shelter under a pile of mound. I was taking cover in the first aid tent, where our brave nurses attended to my wound. You saved my life, but you became a victim to this ruthless war. You saved me on my deathbed, on my way to death, when I thought no more. Rolling down the hill, I crawled and crawled and crawled. I whispered then, you saved my life, Peter, and I wish I could save yours. That was another day, the day of ruthless war, the day that has gone away and there was no return. The poet sincerely admired great people and often dedicated his creations to prominent historical figures. For example, his work, Kurmingazi, was written as a homage to the great Kuishi, and his poem, Aniz Ata, was dedicated to the writer and poet, Taras Shivchenko. His masterpiece, Songs at the Dawn, is another story about a great man. People's artist of the Kazakh SSR, composer, academician, and professor, Ahmed Zhubanov. He was a profound personality who stood at the origins of the development of the country's academic music. Both Zhubanov and Yirgali were the people of their era. Born at the beginning of the 20th century, they were witnesses to all the events that happened over that period. And his poem, Songs at the Dawn, has become a testimony of the era in its very own way. This work is considered a biography of the life of the great composer. The plot commences when the future composer is born into the family of the patron and founder of the first Russian school in Kuyan district. Akhmet's mother, Bibi Shinar, softly hums a lullaby to her child. For the future composer, this melody is the first introduction into the world of music. After all, the melody of the step changes very quickly. And then 1916 came, and the fierce songs of the fire that was flaring up in the step became more prominent. Aman Gildi Imanov became the leader of the fight against Tsarism, but the song of protest died down quickly, only to reappear once again a year later, even louder and more violent. As for Akhmet, he starts believing that the village is too small for him. He learnt enough, and all he wants is to broaden his horizons. One day he secretly escapes from his father's house on horseback, and the village start to gossip, saying that it was a wrong move for his father to buy Ahmed a horse. According to them, the young man acted stupidly, selling the horse and using the money to get admitted into Glinka Musical College in Leningrad. But Ahmed is adamant. He knows that the new era came, that it is the time for new tunes and songs. He believes that it is the time for new instruments too, the ones that can amplify the voice of the old songs. After finishing his studies, Ahmed returns home, where his relatives welcome him back. His mother, a famous scientist, his elder brother, Kudai Birgin, Ahmed's wife, Nawat, and their baby girl, Gaziza. Ahmed becomes a part of the cultural life of Almaty and quickly gains honor and fame. He even organizes a big concert dedicated to the Congress of Soviets. His talent is applauded by many, including the famous Kuishi Dina Nurpisova, the poet Sakyan Sifulin, and the politician Oraz Jandosov. Soon, he steals the show in Moscow too, where the audience applauds his work as the conductor of the Kizhibek opera, staged under his direction. If I'm not mistaken, it was in 1936, exactly when the decade of Kazakh art was taking place in Moscow. But then the war broke out, and the music had to transform to become something that would encourage soldiers' heroic deeds, supporting them in their battles. And it was then when composers joined the battle for his homeland. The soldiers' urge to fight is a song. Blizzard howling overhead is a song. And the kerchief embroidered by my darling is a song, and our battle banner is a song. While we are alive, the trumpets sing to us. We are enchanted by the tunes we love. A cigarette is soldier's flute. The bud, however, can burn his lips. In our final hour, we will stand next to those who share grievances with our land of hopes. There is no time for pitiful discourse. There is no time for anxious thoughts. 
it is no place for foul words. Prepare your songs as sharp as battle spears, bloodthirsty and severe, and our ancestors today are here too. The mountains echo their voices, that is true. Kurman Ghazi and Birjan are ready to follow Tatim Bet and Kazan Gap into the war. There is this one touching episode in the poem when a soldier sings to himself the song Karli Gash, which later helps him to survive the war. The author of the song was Ahmed Zhubanov himself. This song was covered by many performers both in the past and in the modern time. The most well-known rendition of the song belongs to the famous Daos International Band. Karli Gash has become a people's song, and I want to believe that because of such songs the war was eventually won. Nothing like a great song can encourage people and uplift their spirits. However, the post-war period was not easy either. The repressions continued, and the regime was hunting down many people, including the first academician musicologist Ahmed Zhubanov. A number of colleagues opposed him. Zhubanov was expelled from the party, from the Union of Composers, and he even lost his job. This is how Hamid Yergali described that difficult time in his poem. Look at that dodgy scoundrel, praising things he cursed before. Zhubanov and I, we did a great job. We are friends. No, you cannot. Trust those not for a moment, not at all. And still, however, you can't tarnish something that is clear and clean. Against all odds and all the curses, you should just go on and win. Ahmed did not break down, he passed all those tests with dignity. And he was helped not only by the support of his family, but also by the art to which he dedicated his entire life. It was only in 1953 that the composer was acquitted and the colleagues who opposed him had to apologize to him. The poem ends with an edification to Zhubanov's daughter, Gaziza. The poet encourages her to be a dignified follower of her father's work, to play the composer's piano and allow Ahmed's creativity to live in her music, to go on further into the coming centuries. Later, Gaziza Zhubanova People's Artist of the USSR and Rector of the Conservatory will worthily continue the work of her father. But that's another story. The cycle of works dedicated to famous cultural figures, which includes the poem Songs at the Dawn, is only a small part of the legacy of Hamid Yergali. He was the author of over 30 collections of poetry and stories, the topics of which varied extensively. In different years, he worked as a literary contributor at the Socialist Kazakhstan newspaper and was the head of the poetry department of the Writers' Union of the Kazakh SSR. He was engaged in translations of Byron, Sophocles, Shakespeare, Pablo Neruda, and other poets into the Kazakh language. While reading the poems of Hamid Yergali, for some reason, I remembered old black and white photographs that people used to sign and send to each other as an expression of their good wishes. There was so much sentimentality and genuine respect for each other in those cards, things that seem to be extinct in the digital age. And it seems to me that in that poem, apart from the mighty and enormous talent of Hamid Yergali, in the very core of that work, there is something very sentimental. And this sentimentality lives on the pages of his poems worthy of sincere admiration of others. Hamid Yergali was one of the kind, one of those authentic, pre-digital people. He was a true hero of his own era, and he was a talented literary genius indeed. 